Hey, Rich here. I keep this intro brief. I decided to vlog my table build because I thought it might interest people in the different steps and helps me explain things a little clearer. Uh, put a caveat out there now, this is not going to be as well edited as a show. It'll be a bit more rough and ready, so let's get to it. Right, I'm going to get started with a rundown of how I've made the modular board sections. So these are super light. Let me just pick one up. You can see I can pick it up one-handed hold it at this end. It weighs next to nothing at this point because it's mostly polystyrene. So at the back here, I've got the tools that I use to do this. So some XP, so some EPVC, uh, cut to size. I ordered it off um, a website where you put in all the dimensions that you want and they cut the pieces for you. Uh, polystyrene, which I bought for on eBay, um, really cheap. Uh, Gorilla glue, this is the foaming polyurethane glue. It's incredibly good for this sort of build. It's very light and strong. Um, again, edging pieces to protect the outside, the board sections cut to size, and a hot wire cutter. So what I actually did to make these is I sandwiched the polystyrene, um, this is obviously just an off cut, in between the board sections. And to cut it to the right size, I just ran the hot wire cutter along this edge uh, trimming it flush so that they fit exactly and then what I've done is I've glued them down in the center of the board sections and then put the edging pieces which I had to cut in half um, on the outside like this all the way around um, with the glue spread very thinly uh, you spray water onto the receiving surface and then lightly clamp them together because the glue does expand and then leave it to set for three or four hours and you're left with these board tiles. Now I've made them uh, one foot um, by three foot in dimensions, so that eight of them make a six by four table. And if I store them on their sides like this, they are the exact width. Well, I think that here is the width of my wardrobe. Um, so I'll set the shelf height to this and I'll be able to slide them back into the cupboard because they'll be quite tough on these plastic edges. Um, and I should, I think, be able to fit all eight of these on a single shelf. So it lets me put my entire planned Age of Sigma gaming table in the cupboard, um, taking up minimal space. So after batch producing all eight of these, the first step I've done is to take a pen and kind of mark out the rough ideas that I want. What I'm gonna have is buildings and flat tiles on these areas where they're outlined and they'll be swappable in these areas because they're all the same size. Uh, the two towers will be swappable and the bridge will be removable as will another building that goes here. So the key when doing these modular tiles is that this area here needs to be marked out carefully at the joins so that all of them can line up in any configuration. So this end, I will be able to swap any of these in any order and then the same on this end. So this is gonna be the city section Then there's kind of the road and paths outside and then some cliffs up here. So the wall itself will be removable and we'll go in a little trench that I'll build here so that I can again pack it away very easily into the wardrobe. The only things that have to line up are the two river pieces that will be here. They'll have to line up with each other and the road where it enters the gates will have to line up here, but the rest of it can be mixed and matched in any order. So the next stage is to go into prepping the different surfaces. So in the city, I plan to have um, it be tiled um, so that it will be textured like cobblestones. So I'm using some Hearst Arts moulds here. So I won't go into details of how you use these, but essentially you mix up plaster and pour them into the reservoirs and let it start to set. You scrape it flat so they have perfectly flat bottoms and then they set and you, tin, you then push them out and then you can keep making more and more and more and more. What you end up with is little tiles like this and um, the texture and detail on them is really good. They are exact one inch squares to the thousandth of an inch, so they're very easy to build into different shapes like this. I'll actually put links into the Hearst Arts website where uh, Bruce Hurst explains the exact process in detail. Um, these molds are relatively pricey to buy. Um, however, plaster is something like one pound something a kilo. So a pound's worth of plaster will get me approximately eight casts of this mold. So as an example of that, I've finished the first piece, which is the bridge that will go down here. So here is the bridge. Now to buy a resin bridge like this is pretty expensive. Um, the molds for this was a single mold, which cost me around 20 pounds. And then the plaster, 
was eight casts, about a pound's worth of plaster. So for just about 20 pounds, I've managed to make this bridge. Um, and obviously I still have the molds left over so I can make more bridges or more arch detail pieces. And they are all in quarter inch increments. So everything fits together. So a great example of that is here where I've got the flagstones on top of what will be a dock area and underneath I've got the edge of the dock. So this is the rubble effect bricks uh, mixed with the wooden planks and because they're all in exact sizes you can see they mix together quite well. These join lines here once you put a little bit of watered down glue in there and then you actually paint them as you can see from the bridge uh, disappear and don't look quite so obvious. So next up for me is to bash out a whole load more casts of these cobblestone blocks in order to uh, cover the city flooring area. So that'll be all of this blank space here. I've got a whole load of, again, EPVC um, tiles that are all cut to fit exactly in these spaces so that the buildings can be swapped around or can be replaced by flat sections. So if you want a more open battlefield, you can put in the flat sections. Um, if you want it more crowded with buildings, there'll be uh, various options, including a blacksmith's, uh, some houses and an inn that will go around here. And then after that, I'll be working on the wall. In the meantime, I'm also casting up the parts to make a um, mill a uh, water mill that will go here. So this will be like a, a, a stone-lined canal. Um, under the wall, it will turn into the uh, end of the river, which will go under the bridge up there. Excuse the mess of the garage. There's no tips at the moment. Um, and then I've got to start working on the cliffs at the back. So for the cliffs, I'll be doing another layer of polystyrene using all of my off-cut pieces um, and lining them with the uh, Woodland Scenics rock moulds, which I'll be painting with the leopard spotting technique. So hopefully... Um, in the next video, I can get the details of how I'm doing the cliffs at the edge um, and some progress on tiling this area here and starting work on all the buildings. One other thing to add in is that I was unsure in the blank areas what to do, whether I should have some trees, because I really, really enjoy making trees and they make the table look great, or having some rocky areas. The theme for the table is based on mimicking the Skyrim style of um, terrain. So what I've actually got is I've ordered a whole bunch of these uh, MDF laser cut rings um, with the bases that go inside of them. And what I'll be doing is gluing the rings down on the table like this, for example, keeping them on one board section and then having um, a load of 60 millimeter bases um, that have either trees or rocks or some flat ground on them. So again, I can swap them in and mix up the table. So that way they're not fixed on the table. So again, easy storage and you can just put all the trees in a box. I've got some demo trees that I've been making for the gaming table that I'm revamping to sell. Um, so they look like this. So I think I've got some bigger ones coming for this table. Um, but essentially you can see they're actually really tough, you know, Nothing fell off, no flock came off and it didn't get damaged. They can be easily removed. These will be on bases. They can easily be removed, put in a storage box, and that way they don't take up too much space. Right, so hopefully a quick snapshot of the process um, captures people's interest. I'll definitely keep churning these videos out um, in this rough and ready way just to make sure I've got a log of what I've done and people can follow along with interest if they want. Um, we'll be using YouTube to host these videos, plus they'll be linked on our website. Plus, I'll put links into all of the materials and different other techniques that I'm using. If somebody else has done a really, really good video on exactly what they do, I'm absolutely not going to copy it. I'll just link straight through to it. So expect plenty of links through to Luke's APS and Mel the Terrain Tutor videos. And uh, hope you guys have enjoyed watching.